Hey everyone, welcome back to Intro to DJing. In this video, what I'm gonna do is show you how to set beat grids here in Tractor Pro. First thing you need to do is move from whatever view you have into the advanced track view. The easiest way to do this is if you're looking at a track, just double click on this top header part until you kind of see this particular thing. And then once you have your beat grid move over, or once you see this view, go over to the grid icon. Now, in general, when you load in the track, it will automatically analyze the beat grid, and that's kind of what you want it to do. 99% of the time, it will get it on, but sometimes it does not, and that's what it looks like here. So, if it doesn't get it, if it does get it right, you're fine, you're good to go, but sometimes it doesn't get the phase, or in some genres like reggaeton, what'll happen is it'll get it on the off beats and not the on beats. So, the first thing we need to do is find the tempo and then also get the phase. So, once we get the tempo, and the way we can find the tempo is just play the track and you can click on this tap button. Alternatively, you can look online for the tempo or you can try to figure it out. Most of the time, if it's recorded with a click track, like most modern popular music is, it'll be an exact number. Like this is my track chosen. It's at 138 exactly. So by just tapping and clicking, it gets it to 137. So what I may do is just import 139, but it still hasn't actually got the grid. So one thing that can be very helpful for this is if you go to your settings, and go to transport, what you can do is change your mouse control from vinyl to snap. And what that'll mean is it'll actually snap to any of these beats that the beat grid finds. And once you find the beat grid that you want, you just click on this button, which will set a downbeat. And from there, it should grid the rest of your track according to that tempo. Now, if the track has tempo changes in it, it will not be able to do this. Tractor currently does not have elastic beat grids, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, these buttons here allow you to shift the beat grid to the left or to the right, so this will move it to the right, this will move it to the left, so you, you wanna make sure that you line these up with your down beats, with your beats, and then this will increase or decrease the size of the grid. But once again, once you have it set, it's generally pretty good. And then what you do, once you've set your beat grid, it's generally good to hit this lock button, which basically will lock the grid and you'll tell yourself, hey, I've already calculated the grid for this track. And now once you've done this, it'll sync will basically work really well. One tip for analyzing your beat grid, what I tend to do is set a cue point or a downbeat marker here on the first thing, choose my tempo and jump 16 beats ahead and then basically see and make sure that I've lined this up to the right tempo so that my beat grid, notice how it, this is behind because the beats are getting ahead, this is in front. So just lining it up so that each of these grid lines matches each of the down beats or the down beats that I'm trying to hit according to that tempo. And then once you're good, you can just hit the lock button and do this, but be sure you actually click this button to set the beat grid, otherwise sync and your phase meter are not going to work. So that is how you set the beat grids in Tractor, and from there, that should be good for you to go. Because Tractor doesn't have flexible beat grids, you're not able to set transition tempos, so you need to decide whether you want to grid your track to the first tempo or to the track, the, the tempo that the track ends at, but that's a decision you're going to have to make. Or alternatively, you can make your own edit where the whole thing is quantized to the grid. Um, you can do that in Ableton Live if you like. So hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.